for today, I thought it would be appropriate to share with you the history of the Dogwood Club. The name Dogwood stems from the name of our very first meeting location, which was the Dogwood Motel. It was a small roadside inn on Buford Highway, just south of 285. At that time, it was a bucolic rural area, unlike today. Now, during that time, I was serving on the district for District 14, Georgia Toastmasters. So it was incumbent on me to perform the charter ceremony. <laughs> and the, as you notice in the picture, they're all men. Because women wouldn't be allowed to join Toastmasters for at least another 18 years after that point. It was a, it was a, it was a great bunch of guys, and we all like that. We all and the district like to go to that club because the whole the motel served us a hot, delicious breakfast at seven o'clock in the morning before the meeting, and we all enjoyed that. It was worth getting out of bed for. And it was a great bunch of guys. And there there is a list of the charter members. Wow. Mm. Uh, that William Ostrander, he was a character. <laughs> and if you want to hear some good speeches, Fred Jett gave some really good speeches. This is a great club. And this was the manual that we used back in the day. Back then, we carried paper manuals to the meetings. Unlike today, where everything is online. Basic training for Toastmasters. So we were there for seven years until the place burned down, and we had to look for another place. So we found the Squire Inn. Now when we moved, we kept the name Dogwood Club because, well, Squire Toastmasters, nah, it wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. So Squire Inn. And we were there for 23 years. Wow. Oh. Oh. And the best part of that meeting place was one fall day in 1977 when this lovely lady named Kathy Fife decided to join our club. <laughs> she got right into the, into the action, did her icebreaker speech. It was awesome. <laughs> oh, a great speech, and she's been building on it ever since. Yes. The Squire Inn, but that place closed down in 85, and we became nomads for a few years. We tried the Knights of Columbus. That place was oh, full of cigarette smoke, and oh, we were gasping for air. <coughs> We had to find another place. So we found the old Hickory House restaurant. Crowded and noisy. Not the conducive atmosphere for a nice mellow Toastmasters meeting like we have here at this church. So we moved on. Our next location, we went from the ridiculous to the sublime. We had our meetings at the Ramada Inn Central. Wood paneling, mahogany tables, tall upholstered chairs, the height of class. <laughs> but that class came at a price. Ninety dollars per meeting we had to pay. <laughs> so we had to get creative. Here are some of the ideas that we came up with to fundraise. Imagine charging five cents for each ah. That, that <laughs> so, of course, that was not sustainable. We had to move on. We were searching for a more humble abode, and we certainly found it in Morrison's cafeteria. <laughs> Definitely. Now, the good thing about that place was that it had blinding sunlight. <laughs> and the bad, the downside of that is that you couldn't see anything. Forget about making a presentation like this because the sunlight would just block it right out. <laughs> and back in, back in those days, we didn't have a sharp treasurer like Sharon Kell like to, to keep us in line. We just, uh, maybe, did we pay the rent? Did we not pay the rent? Did we, did, maybe we did, maybe we didn't. They would have us out for a lack of payment. Huh? Time to move on <laughs> to St. Matthew's Lutheran Church. We were there for three years when I think they decided
decided didn't want us because they tripled the rent. Time to say bye bye, I think. We ended up at Cokesbury United Methodist Church, our penultimate location, as they say. That lasted for a good seven years. But they decided that they didn't, they didn't think Toastmasters was a good fit. And it was time to move on to our present location where we've been since 2007. So here's some interesting facts throughout for Toastmasters. We started at 7, and we've only moved up to 8, so not much of a change there. Some more interesting facts. Men wore coats and ties right through the 1980s. Fellas, you think we should revert to that? Nah. We had greeters as Sergeant of Arms. Welcome to Dogwood. Meetings are arranged by phone calls. And now we have the origin of Toastmasters of the Year Award. So there you have it. There's the history of the Dogwood Club. Where do we go from here? Hopefully to continue our tradition of exceeding expectations and Look forward to many more years. Let's make it a great year. Madam President.